An in-text citation helps to identify the source of information written in the body of the paper. Reader can locate the corresponding reference in the reference section at the end of the paper with the help of in-text citation. In-text citation should be included when you paraphrase from a source or quote from the source. Otherwise, you may suffer the consequences of plagiarism. You could fail the course or may even get expelled from the school. Hello guys, welcome to our channel. Today we'll be talking about MLA in-text citation. MLA is the second most popular citation style after APA. In this video, you will learn about what to include in the MLA in-text citation, where to include and what to do when you have missing resources. All right, let's begin. The in-text citation consists of author's last name and the page number or page range. Here, Brown is the author's last name and 8 is the page number. If you need a page range, you can write something like Brown 8 to 9. There are several websites which can help you generate MLA citation. For example, go to scriber.com, go to citation tools, click citation generator. Select the format as you can see here, MLA 9. Select the type of source, for example, journal article. Let's use DOI of this paper, which you can find here. Copy DOI, paste it, click search, then cite. Then the paper will pop up and select that paper. Now you can see in-text citation here and reference here. You can copy that in-text citation and paste it in your paper. It's that easy. So how can you do in-text citation in your paper? You can actually do it in two ways. One is parenthetical citation and the other one is narrative citation. Parenthetical citation is placed at the end of the sentence, usually before the full stop or comma. Here, Duncan 1 is the parenthetical citation where Duncan is the author of this paper and one is page number. For narrative citation, author's name appear within the sentence, usually at the start of the sentence as shown here, whereas page number appears at the end of the sentence before full stop. Here, Duncan is author's last name, which is at the start of the sentence, and one is the page number, which is at the end. Sometimes you may need to cite more than one source. In that case, you can write like this in the end of the sentence. You can have two citations separated by a semicolon. When the paper you are citing has many authors, you can cite as shown here. For one author, use author's name and page number. For two authors, give last name of both authors and page number. For three or more authors, use the last name of the first author followed by et al, then page number. If you do not know the author's name, then you can use either the name of the organization or the third version of the title as shown here. Here, FAO is the organization and 56 is the page number. Similarly, the title is how to lose weight in 60 days and citation is how to in quotation. If you do not have the page number, you can always use chapter or timestamp or the numbers related to the source as shown here. As you can see here, first source was divided into chapters. So use author's name that is Thomas and chapter number. For the video source, use author's name and timestamp. And if you cannot locate number or chapter, just write author's last name. Now, if you have same author with multiple sources, what will you do? In this case, use title of paper in between author's name and page number to refer to that paper. Here, first citation has title in italics and second one has quotation. Do you know why? It's because first one is book and second one is an article. If you have different author with the same last name, use the author's initial in in-text citations. And if they have same initials, use the full name. 
That's it for today's video guys. Check out our other videos if you want to learn more about citation. We will see you again in next video. Until then, watch We Inspire and keep inspiring.